Hello friends, welcome back to Earth Vimarsh. Now so far we have been talking about the monotonic transformation of the utility functions. Now let's understand how do we construct a utility function. And when, when I am stating that we are constructing a utility function, we should first of all understand that why we are constructing a utility function. Okay. So as we have already highlighted in the previous slides also that what we essentially are trying to highlight with the help of a utility function is the mapping of the preferences our preference ordering which is there okay so that basically we are trying to highlight with the help of this function right so this is the purpose which it's going to serve now all preferences obviously cannot be represented by a utility function and if you ask why so uh, there are certain caveats to that now first of all we assume the case that there are no intertransitive preferences existing uh, when we are looking into the construction of these utility functions now what do we mean by that is that say for example you have these four bundles uh, w x y and z such that your preference ordering is that w is the most preferred bundle over x y and z right but uh, if you think of and uh, likewise the utility uh, which is being derived is uh, in the same preference ordering now if you think of uh, plotting it uh, in a curve uh, uh, there are certain constraints and if you want to explore uh, into details you may uh, refer to chapter 4 of the halvarian book uh, uh, given the context of what uh, we are going to discuss uh, i don't consider that as much uh, relevant right now to discuss here so uh, uh, we'll be directly jumping to the ways uh, by which we can find the utility function keeping in mind that we are ignoring the cases which are having any uh, intertransitive preference ordering uh, uh, there okay so uh, now how do we find the utility function so like we had uh, discussed in the indifference curves also so uh, given the description of preferences right uh, so say for example you are already given a preference uh, ordering or a function in a functional form also so we try to think about uh, from the point of view of a consumer that uh, what we are trying to maximize right uh, i mean uh, you know that a uh, consumer uh, tries to optimize his consumption choices right his consumption bundle so uh, we ponder over that what combination of good describes the choice behavior of a consumer now uh, to consider uh, an example uh, for constructing a utility function like the indifference curve so say for example uh, our utility function uh, is such that uh, it's given as u of x1 x2 uh, and uh, it's given in a fun uh, functional form and it's represented as x1 x2 right so uh, uh, then the indifference curve which is going to be there okay uh, that is going to be uh, equivalent to uh, now uh, if, if I may ask like uh, what uh, how the shape of the indifference curve is going to be uh, for uh, such kind of function so we know that a typical indifference curve okay uh, is just uh, the set of all the combinations of x1 and x2 right uh, such that uh, it's going to be uh, represented on a curve such that uh, it's going to be fixed like uh, say for example k right so this is how this uh, utility functions uh, indifference curve for uh, any two commodities is going to look like right for some constant value k now uh, if we try to solve for uh, i mean from this equation now uh, say for example i name it as one so if i solving for one okay uh, solving uh, solving uh, i mean uh, uh, one for uh, say for example you want to substitute it basically so uh, if uh, i am solving for sorry uh, yeah solving for say for example x1 okay so we get x2 equals k upon x1 right so this is what we have now uh, given this uh, this curve uh, if we want to depict it in a figure uh, if we are to plot it right so how we are gonna plot this uh, in the graph so i'll change the color yeah so say for example this is x1 x2 plane okay x1 x2 space uh, so 
definitely say for example your x1 is one unit so what's the value of your k going to be uh, given that your x1 uh, is one unit and x2 is going to be uh, say for example uh, two unit any any random value which you uh, want to consider you can consider so what we are uh, going to observe that because this is of the form one upon x right one upon x uh, y is equal to one upon x it's of this form right so any value definitely it's going to yield as a rectangular hyperbola right so say for example uh, here our y is x2 and uh, it's uh, x1 so say for example uh, if you put the value uh, 0 obviously at uh, 0 it's going to be infinity right uh, but uh, that's why it's uh, tending towards the infinity and uh, then uh, say for example your x is 2 right so what is your y y will be obviously 1 upon 2 that's 0 0.5 right so for x uh, equals 2 your y is going to be somewhere here right uh, i mean uh, not uh, exactly at, at a point where uh, 2 lies right so it will be uh, a point uh, behind 2 right so uh, likewise i mean it's going to be uh, of this shape if you keep on plotting the points so uh, this is how uh, its shape is going to look like so say for example uh, at k equal to 1 you get this curve at k equal to 2 you get this curve and at k equal to 3 you are getting this curve okay k basically is representing your uh, utility only right so uh, now uh, say for example uh, what we do is that uh, we change this expression or the functional form of this uh, utility curve or the indifference curve uh, utility uh, uh, function uh, that is uh, instead of x1 x2 now if we are changing this to uh, square okay square form x1 square uh, and x2 square okay uh, we are changing it to this form now with this functional form if we are to plot a uh, utility curve so obviously now your expression has uh, just shifted uh, to x1 x2 whole square right and initially it was uh, the same value now only change which is going to be there is definitely uh, i mean uh, having those similar transformations uh, what we are going to have is that our k is uh, going to be what k upon uh, say for instance x1 is going to be equal to x2 right this is how it's going to be because our if our k is equal to x1 x2 whole square so uh, transposing this to this side uh, brings the square root and uh, likewise you have uh, k upon x1 square right uh, or or you can state that uh, yeah it's, it's it will be in the square right so yeah this is how uh, it will look like now uh, the next point which uh, comes here is uh, what will be the shape of this curve right so uh, obviously uh, it's going to just uh, shift up in terms of the value of the k right it's just going to get squared now uh, the new curve which we'll be having it will be just shifting so say for example if the value was k equal to 1 for the k equal to 1 it will remain uh, same but uh, for k equal to 2 in the initial case now it will be equivalent to 4 right so k equals to 1 4 9 uh, and uh, if you compare uh, in the initial case uh, it, it it was uh, k is equal to 1 2 3 so likewise uh, the graph is going to shift upwards right so your preference ordering like essentially it's going to shift so your next curve will be somewhere here uh, for uh, this is your k equals 4 then your 9 is going to be further up right but uh, remember that it's not of this shape it's basically a rectangular hyperbola right it's tending toward the origin uh, i mean let me draw it again so that it's a little more clearer so yeah pardon me for this bad drawing so yeah so it it, it will be something uh, which is tending towards the origin right like a rectangular hyperbola okay uh, as it tends uh, towards the origin it tends towards the infinity so yeah it's it's going to be like that okay uh, tending towards the origin so uh, yeah so this is all about uh, construction of the utility function okay so uh, now to discuss uh, the examples of how or what type of utility functions we get given different kind of indifference curves which we have already discussed so we'll be looking upon that aspect 
So this is all about the construction of a utility function.